Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Commission Crunch, the first webinar in the PC275 series, Agents of Change. My name is Marty, and I'll be your host this evening, and we're going to cover a lot of exciting things in the next 30 minutes. Uh, feel free to answer, or to actually to enter any questions that you have. Uh, we'll be having a short question and answer at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining, and we hope you have a good evening. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Mr. Dustin Pritchard and Mr. Andrew Crook, the founding partners of PC275 Realty. Andrew and Dustin. Hi there, everyone. Hi, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to, a, like, hopefully a very uh, educational and uh, inspiring uh, conversation. We're, we're here to talk about uh, a few different things. Uh, the three points right here in front of you are, are what we're going to summarize, and that is what the webinar has been all about. Um, but on top of that, I do want to say that the reason why we're here is because we love real estate. This is our chosen profession. We love our job, and we want to make sure that our organized industry has a very long and fruitful future in the years to come. So, yeah. So the first thing we're going to cover tonight is what the Commission Crunch is. This, go ahead. <laughs> the Commission Crunch. Uh, how it has the power to destroy most realtors' businesses over the next five years if you're not paying attention to the changes in the marketplace. Why realtors are struggling to net more while ignoring the monumental shifts that are happening right now in front of us and the opportunities that are there. And also the 10 critical components that you need in your business to not only thrive, but survive, or not only survive, but thrive uh, the changes in the environment and the real estate environment. And at the end, we're going to have a question and answer period if you'd like to ask some questions about uh, what we're talking about tonight and uh, how that's going to affect your business. Feel free to stick around. So first things first, uh, before we go into uh, the future of our, of our industry, is the State of the Union, where we are right now, what's happening in real estate. And when I say the union, I mean realtors. And when, when I say realtors, I mean capital R-E-A-L-T-R-S, members of Korea. As I mentioned to you, I love our profession. And to me, what's most important is about is ensuring that our industry has a long and, uh, I would say, extended life that can lead us all to the future that we want to have. Prosperity. Mm -hmm, exactly. So right now what we're experiencing in the industry, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree with this, is loyalty is at an all-time low. And, and that's really because people are focusing so much on relationships, which is a critical component to loyalty, but it is not the complete picture. And when you focus just on loyalty, sorry, on relationships alone, you're going to be missing a critical component. We'll cover that more in detail. Uh, well, you know what, I'm sure that some of you have actually come across this in the industry as well, where You've, uh, you've had a long-term client, somebody that has maybe bought and sold with you over you know, a period of years or two or three times, and all of a sudden they disappear. And you find that they bought or sold with somebody else or they've selected a different option. And it's not because you didn't have a relationship with them. The consumers are losing touch with uh, the value of a real, a real estate agent. Uh, they're, they're looking for reasons to value your business. And it's not just because you're friends anymore. It's got to be a lot more than that. And so that's uh, something that's affecting all of our industry right now. Mm -hmm. and, and really what we're seeing is there's a lot more business models uh, coming out there right now. A lot of the uh, old guard, a lot of the top players in the industry I'm seeing are, are, are leaving some of the old brokerages that exist right now and you know branching out, opening up their own business model. And I think that's a good thing actually and we're going to discuss that more in the future. But that's what we're seeing is a mass exodus happening. So what's the state of the union right now? It's good. We have more real estate agents than ever, which is good. We have uh, a very strong market share right now. but I, my fear, and, and part of the reason why we're here tonight, mm -hmm. is that uh, we're, we're, we're the empire in decline if we're not careful. That's right. So what is the commission crunch? This is why we're here tonight, and, and this is a part of the reason why we're in front of you here. Uh, the cons commission crunch, simply put, is the consumer is expecting more and more from you, more than has ever expected, all the while demanding better and better prices. And that is, across the board, really what's happening. Now, we can discuss, we can relate this to a lot of the effects that are happening in our society right now. Um, if you look at uh, peak oil, if you look at population overshoot, if you look at the financial meltdowns that we've had in the past you know, five, ten years, what we're experiencing in real estate as the commission crunch really is those larger effects on our civilization uh, on our industry directly. We're seeing more and more people demanding a lot more for a lot less. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It, actually, you can relate it to the Roman Empire. Mm. An empire 
is a natural thing. It, it'll grow and it'll expand until it can't expand anymore and all of a sudden you'll find that uh, it can't service its population the way it used to and the population becomes discontent. And that's exactly where we're sitting right now where we've had four decades of exactly the same business model with very few options for consumers out there and this is the natural evolution of an empire. It's, it is in decline and right now the mass exodus of those major players, uh, the people that you have seen leave your brokerages and going somewhere else to start their own team or start their own brokerage that's natural it is a sign that the empire is crumbling that there is a mass exodus happening and mm -hmm. they're seeking a better way a way to service their customers more and to to provide more value to the consumer mm -hmm. so if, if you remember back in 2012 uh, Korea uh, did a study what they called aptly the, the Korea futures project where they uh, surveyed uh, many real estate agents across mm -hmm. the country and they came up with four possible futures for our industry, which are the, the Coup, Treading Water, Realtor Source, and the Quantum Leap. And uh, what we're going to do tonight is, is discuss those four possible futures and show you what we think is uh, the better way forward. The Coup. What is the Coup? Well, essentially the Coup is mere posting services. Right now we're seeing, because of technology, because of techno, uh, communications, and because the consumer has more access to information than they ever did before, we're seeing uh, technology-oriented companies entering the marketplace and providing a service to the consumer. Now, we know all the commission-free companies that are out there that are servicing consumers and trying to take them away from organized real estate, but what we don't realize is that these mere posting services are actually starting to offer representation. Mm even though the representation maybe is not as good a quality as what we can provide as professional realtors they're still doing it and the consumers are buying and that is what's happening right now so what what's happening is that these mere posting services are offering a little bit of representation they're getting stronger and more people are going to notice that they're getting stronger and so more people are going to want a piece of that pie and so there is a distinct possibility or a distinct future for us where these mere posting services that offer a little bit of representation will drive a wedge between organized real estate and the consumer. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what the coup is, allowing uh, outside factors to take away the market share that uh, realtors have enjoyed for forever, as, as far as I know. Oh, yeah. And uh, and really, the, the threat is that if we allow this to happen, if we collectively stick our heads into the sand and say, oh, they can never outperform us, they can never offer the value I offer, what's going to happen is that we're going to face the same fate as travel agents. And where have they gone? Well, travel agents were faced with exactly the same threat. Uh, online services, access to information, they slowly and surely become more and more redundant as these mere posting services for the travel agency uh, or agent uh, uh, industry, they started taking that market share. Mm -hmm. And the consumers were no longer seeing value in the travel agent. Well, the same thing's happening with realtors. The, the consumers are starting to struggle to see the value in a realtor service. And don't think it can happen to us. If I ask you to name travel agents right now, you're going to give me Travelocity. You're going to be Hotel.com. These are the mere posting services of travel agencies. Yeah, that's okay. right. You're not going to... Anyways. Yeah, failure to respond to the mere posting services uh, with different options for consumers, well, it's basically just treading water. Exactly. And, and that's the next future that uh, Korea Futures said that uh, we really have. And that's where a lot of us are really. And unfortunately, this is the answer that most brokers give their agents. And this is what most of the coaches are, are selling as the solution to your problem is just keep treading water. You know, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, tr tr try to fine tune your systems. Seek out maybe ways to squeeze a couple more bucks out of, out of your deals by getting a little bit better commission splits or stuff like that. Really, at the end of the day, it's just more of the same. Well, I, I call it the chasing the illusion of net more. Mm. It's it's uh, looking, the grass is always greener on the other side. It's the, I'm in this brokerage, I'm making these splits, so I'm making the, I'm, ha I'm being charged these fees, and oh, if I jump over here onto this other ship, uh, I'm going to make a little bit more money. But the realization that most people ha ha need to come to is that, all these ships are all sinking. So you're only postponing the inevitable. If you are not willing to make a change, these ships will sink and you'll end up in the water, treading water, waiting to be rescued. Mm -hmm. So simply put, treading water is not a sustainable plan. If your goal is, well, I got five more years to retirement, I mean, fine, that, that that's your plan of action, it's your plan of action. But for the rest of us who are looking to make this a lifelong career that want to provide abundance for our families and you know the dreams that we want to accomplish, uh, that's, not, that's unacceptable. No, 
That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly so right. this is what happens when we fail to adapt. When we allow the coup to happen, when we tread too much water, it results in Realtorsaurus. This is the third future that Korea Futures uh, said is a possibility for us. And what this is, is really the culmination of the first two at the end point. The end of organized real estate as a as a, For as you. Yes. For, for you, specifically. We're talking about you. This isn't about just the entire industry because, you know, we're all egocentric. It's what's in it for us. And mm. you know what? Uh, at the end of the day, this will make a big difference for you because you will become extinct. If you tread too much water, ignore the coup, and don't make change, mm -hmm. you will become a realtor store, realtor source, and there will be an extinction event. Mm -hmm. And what is a real? Uh, what is an extinction event? That's you know taking on a part-time job because you're not making enough money. Mm -hmm. That is uh, you know uh, getting in dis domestic disputes with your spouses because you're working too much time mm -hmm. to make the same money you made five years ago. Mm -hmm. You know things like that. That is the that is the realtor source. That is mm -hmm. the eventual leaving of the business because your career didn't work. Mm -hmm. And your career, it, it wasn't the career that didn't work. It was the fact that, uh, uh, that the change was happening and it was just simply being ignored. Exactly. So the tipping point is the perfect storm of systematic breaks. Very few companies are focusing in on what needs to be done to address the monumental shifts that are happening in our marketplace. And effectively, it means, of course, not coming to the market with a plan that will provide not only systematic improvements and a better service for our clients, but volume. And that is really where we need to focus in on the improvements. Uh, a lot of the, the, again, traditional treading water model, what brokers and what most trainers are offering right now, mm -hmm. is you need to find more ways to offer more value, to express better services to your clients, but they're asking you to work for the same or potentially even less than what you were in the past. But so with more hours, yes, more effort. Exactly. You know? So how do you provide more service without committing more time? It's essentially it's impossible. To well, you're, you're discounting instead of discounting your prices, you're discounting your 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 actual time. And time is the one thing you have a very limited resource of. That's right. If you're able to systematize your business model, you're able to do more volume without spending more time on it. But if you stay at the same business model, treading water, and all you do is keep adding more and more things that take time onto your each individual unit you're selling, you're going to find very quickly that you're discounting your time. And that's our most precious resource of all. Indeed. Uh, at the end of the day, our industry, we're at the tipping point. Our industry can go one way or the other. Mm. We, can either, we can either ignore the changes happening around us or we can embrace the changes. This is, it, it can be something terrible or something absolutely wonderful. Uh, and one piece of advice that I can give to any of you, you must seek out those people that are willing to embrace change. Mm -hmm. Seek them out. Learn from them. It doesn't matter if it's us or anybody else. Like You need to look around and find the people that are making a difference, that are doing things differently. Those people are survivors. They're visionaries. They're the ones that are going to be around when all the other realtors are sitting there going, where'd my business go? Mm -hmm. So fast forward to the future. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Simply put, many realtors will continue to chase the illusion of net more, which is, again, squeezing every last little drop out of that sponge, every last little drop of commission you could possibly get out of every single deal you're doing, as opposed to seeking better opportunities. But with massive disruption, there's a way paved by visionaries to take a quantum leap. That's right, that's right. Now, I know that some of you are upset. Uh, some of you are looking around at different people to blame, businesses to blame, uh, commission-free people, discounters, you name it. There's all kinds of people that you can point fingers to. Uh, but at the end of the day, you don't work, f you work for the consumer, and the consumer decides how they're going to spend their money. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it, it's really interesting because there's a lot of realtors that are not going to survive the evolution of real estate. But like Andrew said, you know, with great change comes great opportunity. So the quantum leap. That's the fourth option. Mm -hmm. The Korea Futures decided, uh, where they they came to the determination that the quantum leap was the fourth thing that uh, uh, that realtors have, or the fourth option that realtors have, or the fourth path. Mm -hmm. And uh, the quantum leap is, you know, it it simply put, what is the quantum leap? The quantum leap is simply put, understanding that there is no such thing as standard real estate. It's the realization that there are going to be 
hundreds and hundreds of real estate business models out there and in fact that this is the renaissance of real estate mm -hmm. the fact that the commission free opportunities out there for consumers the the mere posting services and any other technological threat against our industry the only reason why they have a foothold is because the consumer doesn't have enough choice the renaissance the solution the quantum leap is giving the consumer more choice it's the only thing that stops those entities from driving a wedge between us and the consumer it's really important to understand this point here, so I want to spend a moment on this because mm -hmm. Korea Futures, when, when, they, when they did the study and they, they gave the, the four different types of futures, they were very detailed about what the first three were and we more or less just repeated what they were saying. But they didn't have much to say about Quantum Leap. All they really said is that yeah. agents will take, you know, realtors will take action in developing their own future. That is really all they gave. And, and I, I sent you all a link uh, yesterday via email. Uh, with a video from uh, from one of the presidents of uh, the uh, uh, I think Vancouver board, and he said basically that summed it up quite nicely. And I hope you have watched, had a chance to watch that. But if not, that's fine. The the point is is that what what I really want you to understand the reason why we selected this particular slide is I really wanted to convey this point mm -hmm. to you. So mm -hmm. I, I hope you've seen the Matrix the movie. If you've not, I highly recommend watching it. It's a great movie. But if you've not seen it, what they're saying here, simply put, is this is a scene in the movie where um, the the main character is is standing in front of a small child who's holding a spoon and the spoon continues to bend and, and move around in front of him and the character's like, how is this happening? How is the spoon bending? And the spoon boy says, well, you need to understand that bending the spoon is impossible and for us the spoon is the standard model. What you need to realize is that there is no spoon. So when you realize that there's no actual spoon there or no standard model of real estate, then it is not the model that needs to bend, it is only you. So. I hope you're with us still, and if you're willing to take the quantum leap, then we want to show you what are the 10 components that we have in our mm -hmm. business that have helped us take our business through the evolution of real estate into the next level. And uh, those in our team who have, who have come with us have seen some pretty amazing things, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, we can share that with them. And for those who are, are new to this, who are saying, well, what is this really all about? Here are, are the 10 critical components that we have distilled down to uh, what we believe are the core components of any successful business. And we're going to spend the next few minutes going through each one of these and, and kind of giving you some detailed points. Now, we don't have all night to really go through a, a very detailed analysis of everything. Uh, we more than happy to carry this conversation on later, Indeed. but in the meantime, Meantime, let's go through a quick synopsis to give you a, a basic understanding of what you need to do to get quantum leap in your own business. Team, together everyone achieves more. The mistake that a lot of realtors make, and it's really important to understand that it, we're, we're not trying to be egotistical here or anything like that, but it is it is a focus on themselves. The mistake that a lot of realtors make is focusing on their own personal sales volume, on uh, on chasing the illusion of net more, of, of okay, so what's, what's in it for me at this brokerage and what can I get out of this split and what fees do I pay and what's my bottom line and okay, that's gonna be my driving decision. And at the end of the day, the the, the key component that we believe is, is one of the most important components in your business in order for you to thrive and, and, and succeed through the evolution is team. Mm. And that is focusing on leveraging uh, other people by educating other people, by helping other people be super successful, and by uh, driving residual income off of helping others become successful. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely critical. Related to a house, right now, you're a house. You let's say you're renting out a house. You're getting, you know, say a thousand dollars a month from your house right now, and you know, say your mortgage is nine hundred bucks. And you're making a hundred dollar profit right now. You're a house. A team is a multifamily housing project. Mm -hmm. A team is a multitude of units. So if your house goes vacant right now, aka you go on vacation or you get sick or you know maybe you get burnt out because the spring was really really busy and uh, summertime is you know oh, it's summer and I'm burnt out and I'm just going to take a couple of months off. You know what? That house sits empty. It's not making you any money. At the end of the day, when you have a team, no matter how burnt out you are or sick or if you decide to go on a sabbatical or go on a vacation for an extended period of time, uh, a team 
will leverage other people's energy into income for yourself while you are away. Mm -hmm. And that is actually just like being a sole proprietor versus a business. Right now, most of you without a team, anyone without a team is a sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. You don't go to work, you don't get paid. If you are a real business, if you're running a team, you can go on vacation and get paid while you're gone. You can go to sleep and you're getting paid. As a matter of fact, if you have a big enough team and a good model, you can actually go on vacation or go away or go on sabbatical and you can come back and your business is bigger. That is a business. That is true freedom and that is leveraging a team. And that's why that's such an com uh, important component to our business. Mm -hmm. So simply put, build a team or join a team. You don't have to be a team leader to see the benefits of a team. You can seek out a team that can be inspiring and give you strength and ability and push you beyond what your uh, current level is right now. And I know for myself, that, that's really launched me ahead into my career. I was a sole proprietor for many years working at uh, my previous brokerages. And uh, it only was until I partnered up with Dustin and started building my team that I actually see true success and break through my personal income barrier. Absolutely. The next critical component to building a successful business is mentorship. This is the lifeblood of your business. Mentorship is not simply, uh, I'm going to tell you how to do things. So I, I, I'm an experienced agent, so I'll, say, I'll dictate, do this, do that. Here's some leads, take these, go out and do that. That is not mentorship. No, no, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I don't know. Some of you may have gone to you know, a brokerage, the brokerage you're at maybe, and uh, a team leader head or a mentor or a, a coach or whatever would pop in that VHS mm -hmm. and you'd watch uh, maybe a Buffini video or something like that. Yep. That isn't mentorship. That's watching a video. That's someone telling you what to do, not showing you how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mentorship is getting into the field of the people, actually helping your team, or vice versa, if you're joining a team, going out with your mentor and having them coach you through specific practical events. That is what mentorship is. Yeah. It is apprenticeship. Think of blacksmiths. Think of journeymen. This, this is what mentorship truly is. Yeah, wouldn't it be really nice if you were able to go out in the field with a top 1% realtor? 1%, the top of the top. Wouldn't it be nice to go out there and sit on their shoulder and watch what they do? Wouldn't that be nice? And you know what? That is what a team is all about. Mm -hmm. Somebody latching onto somebody that's going to teach you everything that they know. And I know some of you have gone through the experiences as well where you've been in a situation where there's top performers in your business right now, in your company that you're in right now, and you've asked them questions and they've been a little evasive, not very forthcoming. You know, a team environment gives you that mentorship. That mentorship is actually, uh, so critical and it's the only way forward. Those islands unto themselves, they won't last. Mm. And you know what? And unless you bond yourself with people that are forward thinking, a team, as a group, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to do so as well. So the key point here to understand is you need to be a clockmaker, not a time teller. And what that means is you need to build the system. You need to be an architect. You need to create the team and you need to, if, if you are building your own team, or you need to join a team that has that structure in place, as opposed to a time teller, which is somebody who dictates. Because the problem is that as soon as that dictator goes on vacation, gets sick, or decides that they're not going to be as involved in your business, the entire business falls apart. Whereas a clockmaker can, once they leave the clock and set it in motion, it continues to tell time long after that clockmaker is gone. And that's what we want to be, and that's what a, that's what a mentorship is. So the two first two components of a successful uh, quantum leap is team and mentorship. Next is systems. This is the blueprints of your business. I mentioned to you a second ago about being a clockmaker. This is exactly a critical component of building a successful team and it's the only way to really offer a greater value to your clients. Mm -hmm. Systemize approach to selling homes. Some of you are juggling a couple clients and, and you're finding it's, you know, it's relatively easy to maintain a couple clients in your books. One or two buyers, one or two listings. For those of you who have had seven or eight listings active at one time know the massive juggling lack that you're trying to do. And if you don't have systems in place to ensure that you are doing your job effectively and making sure that everything is coming in order, you're going to find that you're giving it a, a different experience for every client, which is not going to be the, the value of the service they're looking for. No, that certainly isn't. Like some of our team are juggling 15 listings. Mm -hmm. And without a systematic approach, without that assembly line that is a, a assembly line with specialists on the assembly line, each doing a specific job, making sure that their job, and they're experts at the one thing, mm -hmm. Those that assembly line, that system allows your business to create more abundance for yourself. Yep. So simply put, build the assembly line. 
specialization and having systems. So if you have a team that has strong mentorship, that follows systematic approach to business, you can now specialize, which means that you can focus your energy at a specific task. Depending on where your position is in the team, what your role is, you can actually focus and be far more efficient than any sort of jack of all trade person will be. And I don't know about you, but I remember back in the day, I'd be juggling 15 different hats. I was a bookkeeper, I was the accountant, I was the marketer, I was the negotiator, I was a sign installer, the lockbox guy, I would be doing final inspections, I can go on and on and on. Photos on your phone. Photos on my phone, yeah, of course, yeah. Can't forget that. Obviously. Yeah. All, all that stuff. And the point is, is that I was doing all of that. and. Yeah. It wasn't always the same. Sometimes it would be, you know, I would do a little bit extra here because I had, you know, a little bit more downtime, so I could be a little bit better systematic approach. Or you like that person a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So the emotions Absolutely. get involved, and really at the end of the day, you're not able to deliver a systematic, specialized performance. Specialization is the force multiplier in your business, and what that is is simply put, a military term that is what we use to describe a, a massive improvement over the enemy force. So, just a very simple explanation: if you have uh, both have ground force, you both have a hundred thousand troops, but one guy has jets and the other guy does not have jets. The guys with jets are going to be vastly superior in strength to the people without jets, even if they have the same amount of troops. And that's what force multiplier is. You can specialize your army, your team, to do their role far better than any jack of all trade could ever do. That's exactly right. It's a combination of uh, attributes that uh, make a given force more effective, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great price. The reason why they choose your business. Now, I want to be very clear about this. Mm -hmm. Great price is not cheap. It's not about being cheap. A lot of people say, well, I want to you know, offer more value to justify my, my price. Great price is not about being cheap. Great price is value and cost. If you offer a ton of value at a good price, then they say that's a great price for that service. Mm -hmm. That's what great price is. It's completely subjective. And mm -hmm. it's all about the consumer and what they want. Exactly. It's not about you and no. what you want. It's about what the consumer wants. Yes. Yeah. That's a really key point. Yeah. So what I like to say to, to my team and to, to everyone out there who's listening is do not focus on what you can take, but what you can give what you can give away and still keep going. That is what a great price is all about. It's about giving as much value as you possibly can while having the lowest cost possible. That's how I look at a great price. And when I'm searching for services that when I want to buy, when I want to hire a kitchen guy, when I want to hire uh, my lawyer or my accountant, I look for somebody who can provide an amazing value, a high level of expertise mm -hmm. at a great price so the cost is associated. I'm not looking for the cheapest guy. I don't do cheapest. I prefer great value. And so that's what great price is. It's all about value. So you need to build your business to provide true value to your consumer and to your team. Yeah, I, I just have one message about great price. Don't react to the commission crunch by giving up commission no. when you're negotiating for your listing appointment. Don't do that. Respond to the change and build your business model to make huge margins while giving your value to your customers. That's the key. That is the key. Absolutely the key. Abundance. This is the reason for your business, and this is what great price should lead into. You need to have volume. You need to have experience through sales. Abundance is the hallmark of a professional. Now, a lot of people throw around the term professional, and, and they, they use it almost as like a swear word. They're, they're saying, well, that's unprofessional. And I hear, I'm a professional. I'm a professional. And I have a question for you. How many ends do you think it takes a year to be a professional? And that's actually one of the polls that we have uh, on the webinar, so you're more than happy to, to chime in there and, and to, to click away. Um, but seriously, how many, how many ends a year do you think, that's seller and buyer ends, do you think it would take to be considered a professional? That's right. It's uh, one of the key messages about being uh, having abundance is that it's the reason why you're going to work. Why mm -hmm. would you want to go to work? You're not going to work to be a charity just because you like people or because you like homes. You're going to work because you <laughs> because you <laughs> yeah. are there to make dollars, right? And at the end of the day, that abundance is 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 the reason for you getting out the door and going and showing homes and doing those things. Mm -hmm. So the question is is if it, or the statement is is if you're unhappy with the current level of success where you are, you must make a change. If you want more, you have to change your behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the current system isn't working for you, despite all your efforts, you need to align yourselves with the people that are successful, and you must make a change in your business. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
one other thing is don't ever give up your dreams we all mm. entered this business for a reason uh, you 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 might have aspirations grandiose aspirations but when you come up against uh, difficult listing appointments or a, uh, another competing business that's taking your clients away don't give up on your dreams change your business mm -hmm. if it's not working make the change mm -hmm. don't be afraid because there are solutions out there it's not hard to compete for business you just have to have the courage to be that visionary and attach yourselves with people that are not afraid to make change mm -hmm. absolutely feel good this is the moral compass of your business and this is this is one of our slogans on our signs and this is really mm -hmm. one of our core values is feel yeah, good and, and, and actually one of my favorite ones and, and yeah. what feel good is 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 that moral compass inside you you know when you're doing things whether or not you're doing the right thing or if you're just doing something to make ends meet mm -hmm. uh, and a part of the the um, concern or the reason why I was talking about professionalism a second ago with abundance is because if you don't have abundance if you are just doing one deal a month you're just just getting by you have to work part-time just to you know to, to make, make ends to meet, you face the danger of making unethical, perhaps unfeel good decisions when it comes to unfeel good. Unfeel good. Unfeel yeah, good. Like, like that. I like that. Uh, okay. you know, yeah. When it comes to dealing with clients who, you know, they this may not be the perfect house for them, but they've shown interest in it, and you're like, well, if you like the house, put an offer, make it happen, and you will do that if you have to make it happen. Whereas if you have an abundance of opportunities around you, you can actually hold your line and say, you know what, I know you say you like this house, but there's really these issues and these issues that you're not aware of, and we need to find you the right house at a great price. And so that's the difference between a feel good and, and a professional. And, and a final point on this is that professionalism and ethics, which is what feel good is, are two separate things. Yeah, they are. Although they do often go together hand in hand, a lot of people blend the two and, and confuse them. Professional is somebody who is very good at their job, who has a lot of volume. They, are, they do a lot of deals, they have a lot of abundance in their life, they are somebody who can conduct themselves as a true professional. They have hours of operation. Oh, they've, got, they've gained tremendous amount of experience from the volume that they have conducted in yes. their business. That is absolutely critical. If you're only doing one deal a month, how much expertise are you gaining? Mm. You know what I mean? That's, it's, it's, that's a good it's, point. It's really, really important to understand that a professional is booked all the time. You yes. go to your doctor, and would you go to a doctor that only has one appointment a week? No, I, w I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I want to go to the doctor that is busy because people want to go to that doctor because they're busy, because they know something that everybody else doesn't. Exactly. A professional, what, when you call, if you call your professional accountant, your professional lawyer, if you give them a call at 8 o'clock on a Sunday night, you know what's going to happen? They'll get back to you on Monday morning. That's a professional. A professional is not somebody who jumps up, this is what we call a Pop-Tart agent, somebody who <laughs> jumps up out of their seat and runs out and shows the first property because, you know, that's the first buyer call they've had in a week or two weeks. And Quite frankly, I'm sorry, but that is not a professional. A professional is somebody who values himself first and foremost, and then they're able to offer great value to their clients. On the other hand, is feel good, which is ethical. And this is somebody who is a professional who also makes good decisions for their clients. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people in the industry, not I shouldn't say a lot, but I know some people in the industry who are professional but are not ethical. And I know some great ethical people who are very nice people, but they're not professional because unfortunately they don't have the abundance that is the hallmark of a professional. So Simply put, feel good is you reap what you sow. Abundance is the value and the experience. Two sides of the same coin that can define a true realtor. Real service. This is what will define your business. Now, a lot of, and, and I'm going to go around the same topic here because a lot of people like to focus in on full service as, as, as their, their claim to the value they provide clients. I give my clients full service. What is full service? What's full service to you? I, if you ask 10 different realtors what full service is and actually have them document what full service is, you get 10 different answers. Mm -hmm. yep. Full service is fluff. It, it actually doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's the, it's, it's your back's against the wall because you don't actually have a valid explanation why a seller or buyer should choose your services. That's what full service means. It's, you need to concentrate not so much on full service in that in that standard response to customers or your competition. It's actually about offering real service. Real service, and it's one of our taglines, but we believe in it so much that real service is understanding your consumer, looking at them and, 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 and listening to what they're saying and looking at what, how they're judging with their pocketbooks, looking at their, their, their buying habits and, and 
despite your relationship with your client, why mm. they are choosing somewhere else or someone else. That is real service. Finding out what those things are and offering it to those clients the way they want it, how they want it, the price they want it, that is real service. And at the end of the day, that is what is going to make a successful business as opposed to somebody who's sitting around and, and, and waiting to be rescued as they're treading water. And and you know, point one of the slide here is, is what we're trying to convey, which is focusing on loyalty alone, and in this case loyalty, I mean relationships, focusing on, on that alone is insufficient in today's market. What the consumer is looking for, what lo what will get loyalty is a relationship and great value. Together, that is how you create the loyalty you're looking for and build a long-term business. Yeah. But if you focus on just, we have a relationship, so you have to choose me, friend, otherwise you'll damage our relationship, that is not a sustainable business model. And it works for a while, but all it does is build resentment long-term. And, and I know, I've, I mean... It's actually not working so well it's not. anymore. It's, it's actually, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, it's really making a dent in the industry for a lot of realtors out mm. there. At the end of the day, how do you get real service? How, how do you learn how to provide real service? It's simply real service and true value is created from experience through volume. Okay. Next up is technology. This will create volume and efficiency in your business. This is the tools you need to be using to leverage your team, to leverage your systems and specializations that you're doing. This is what you need to use to streamline your business, to allow your clients to communicate with you more efficiently, to allow you to, to save your time. Again, your time is your most precious resource. Way more precious than anything else. Way more precious than money. Time. Time is not money. I, I disagree with that statement very much. I think time is your fundamental gift that you have. And if you squander that by not trying to find ways to leverage it, then unfortunately you're going to be surpassed by people who are. It's yeah. as simple as that. People that create efficiencies using technology. And that's what's happening with the mere posting services. They're, they're using technology. They're driving that wedge by getting mm -hmm. in there where the consumer are. Mm -hmm. you, you all have heard 80% of all consumers, all buyers and sellers, they start the search online. Well, guess where the mere posting services are? They're online. Yep. They're there where the consumer is. And there's tons of services out there that I'm seeing right now that are that are mm -hmm. uh, operating as like a backup MLS. I don't, I don't want to name any names, but there's some, there's some companies out there that yeah, are offering backup MLS type services services that are, are, are very have very big backers that are dumping a lot of money into taking market share into getting people into them and what they're now doing is they're actually getting buyers contracted so that they think they can resell those contracts to agents for you know 50% of the total commission they pay 25% to the buyer and they pay 25% to that company that got that contract they're, they're becoming a middleman exactly they're getting in between you and the consumer and selling you the consumer yes and that's an example of another mere posting service, although they're not traditional like real estate brokerage in so much as, you know, well, I guess they not are traditional, not traditional, yep. but they are a business model that is making money. So, and out of your pocket and out of the industry's pocket, quite frankly, because right. they're not really offering services, they're being middlemen. And there's a perfect example of another company that's using technology for their benefit. So you need to be using technology. Very simply put, the goal of technology is it allows you to automate and delegate. If you can't do that in your business, you will be surpassed. You need to automate and delegate. Yeah, uh, some of you have actually asked the question, and, and you know what? It's uh, it's pretty common. You know, I see a question here. Uh, I got a question. How do you guys make money? It's this slide. It is the specialization. It's the assembly line. It's using technology, creating efficiencies, leveraging team. All these things is how we drive incredible profits mm -hmm. for our team. Not just for our company, but our team members make great money because they use these systems, this technology. They leverage their time using technology. Mm -hmm. And so technology is a critical component to a successful business model. That's right. And the final and, and I believe one of the most critical components to not only surviving the quantum leap, the evolution of real estate, but actually thriving and building the future of our industry is embracing change. This will launch your business. That's right. You need to have a student mentality. And what I mean by this is that you need to open your mind to the fact that there are people out there, there are businesses out there that have figured out different ways of doing things that are great. 
And I, I'll tell you right now, I, me and Dustin are, are, are master students. And that's part of the reason why we are where we are right now, is we look at everybody and everything. We, we pick up great tips and tricks from a lot of our local real estate agents in, in the market. Mm -hmm. We're looking at people's websites. We're looking at how they interact with each other. We're seeing how they interact with their clients. We're picking up some great tips and tricks all the way through. And if you're not absorbing and learning and seeing how you can take and, and make things better and add to your business, then you're missing a really critical thing. You need to constantly be evolving and adapting. The only constant in this universe is change. Nothing stays the same. Nothing is really static. That's the myth. There, the spoon doesn't exist. It's You are the one that has to bend. And you need to realize that if you don't open your mind to the possibilities of alternative options and ways that you can grow your business, again, you will be surpassed by people who are. That's right. Uh, one of the other things uh, that is part of embracing change is that brokerages need to embrace change mm -hmm. as well. The only way that a brokerage is going to survive, and the only reason why that the mass exodus is happening out of the mass of, you know, the big brokers that are that are out there right now, and you all know who I'm talking about. Uh, you know, the only reason why it's happening is because the brokerages are not embracing change. The existing business model makes them too much money. Mm -hmm. They're not feeling the pain yet. They're not feeling the suffering so that they're forced to make change. And at the end of the day, and, and one of those things is uh, ownership of the business. I believe 100% that WestJet has it right, that if you're going to work at a company, that's one thing. But if you want to work with a company, become a partner with a company, if you want to have true value out of where you work and, and, and going to work every day, I believe that you need to own a piece of that company. Can, can, can I jump in you here? Because sure I want to make this point really clear. This is the critical component. We are telling our sellers and buyers all the time, why would you rent? Of course you want to own a property. It's way better to yeah. own a property than it is to rent a property. Yet so many of us are tenants in our own business. We don't have any ownership share whatsoever. We go in, we, we pay our rent to our boss, and we go home. That's, to me, that doesn't make any sense. That's not entrepreneurship. No. Guess what? Your broker of records, the entrepreneur. He's the one who's got the team. He's the one, or she, uh, has the team. They have the multi-unit family housing. So when one realtor leaves, the other one comes in, and now they're still making money. They have the business that they can walk away with and come back, and it's bigger. They can go on vacation get paid all the time. You, just because you uh, have a, a, a real estate license, doesn't make you an entrepreneur. At the end of the day, you need to own a piece of your business in order, and leverage team and leverage all the other components in order for you to take advantage of the changes that are happening in the marketplace. And I, I believe in that so strongly. We encourage our people to own a piece of our business. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is not about Andrew and I, you know, us, just us, and we're going to be very successful, just us and our team is our team. Our teams are partners, every mm -hmm. single one of them. We, we, we are building an army that's going across the city, the province, the country. And you should too. You mm -hmm. should have a piece of your business. You should own a piece of your business. So if you are going to take a quantum leap in your business, mm -hmm. I would highly recommend that uh, one of the first things you do is put a plan together to actually own your business. Whether it's a piece of the business or the entire thing, that's up to you. But at the end of the day, you should have ownership stake because it makes right. no sense to rent Mr. Buyer. So, the commission crunch. Will it cultivate or will it crush? It's here, it's now, we're all experiencing it, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. We are not the change in the industry, we are merely adapting to the changes in the industry. Just like other business models yep. that have existed all throughout the country are doing exactly the same thing. At the end of the day, I just want to ask you one last question. Do you want to make a move? because you're forced to make a move, because it's become so painful, so hurtful that you have to make a change? Or do you want to join a group of visionaries that are taking advantage of the changes in the marketplace, that are leading the pack and taking over the industry? So thank you very much for joining tonight. Uh, That's the end of our uh, talk of the presentation we have right now. We're going to go into uh, some question and answers. Uh, our, our moderator, uh, Marty has been collecting uh, some questions for us, so if, if you want to stay around and listen to some questions, or if you have any questions yourself you want to ask, please feel free to type them into the question box that's in the uh, top right corner of uh, the screen, and um, we're here to here to chat. Uh, just to let you know, folks, that if uh, if you're um, 
if your control panel has minimized, there's a red arrow that you click. You just click that red arrow, it'll pop back out again, and you can type in your questions there in, that, uh, in the little box. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them in now, and we'll do our best to answer them for you. When I'm on mute. Wow. What can I say, ladies and gentlemen? That was absolutely excellent. Ran a little over than what we expected, uh, but I hope you Sorry, all enjoyed it. And I see some of the it's questions good. coming in That's now. Uh, we've got one here. Uh, it looks like it came from Windsor, and they're asking uh, Dustin or Andrew, how long has PC275 uh, been using this model and been in business? Well, I can answer that. Uh, uh, we started PC275 April 1st, no joke. Uh, and actually, this April 1st is our three-year anniversary running PC275. Uh, we've seen some tremendous growth. Ac actually, we're planning, hopefully we can hit it on time, uh, but we're planning our grand opening uh, of uh, a 5,000 square foot uh, facility on Warncliffe Road uh, on that date. So, yeah, three years. Three years. Three years. Uh, another question here is coming from London. It says, if I drop from 6% to 275, are you telling me that I'll make money? You know what? I'll take this. Okay, so simply put, if you take your existing business right now, you know, the, the amount of deals you're doing, the, the structure of your business model, and you just drop your commission from, from a different rate to a lower rate, will you make more money? No, of course not. No. That makes no sense at all. Of course you wouldn't. It's not about just taking your existing business model and charging less. That's not, that's not the way forward, and, and quite frankly... That's not value. No, there's no value in that at all. Um, I know of other competitors that have done the similar things where they've taken the existing business model and made no changes to it and just dropped price to try to buy, buy clients. Simply put, that is insufficient in this market. Uh, one thing we've learned, uh, you know, because quite frankly, we're 275 and we don't have a massive flux of people kicking our door down demanding listing of properties. We don't have 15% market share at 2.75%. I, I, Not yet. <laughs> let me. <laughs> we have a lot of people calling us to list we the do. properties. What Andrew's saying is that we don't have the, a huge portion of the marketplace saying, forego everybody else and we're going with you because of rate. It's not about rate. It's about value. Yeah. It's about relationships and value in a systematic approach so that you can profit off of giving value to your consumer. Mm -hmm. That's using all the 10 components that we talked about uh, to be able to do that. So the answer, the simple answer is, is that if you're looking to improve your business, you want to change your business model and you want to make sure that you're finding the best balance between value and cost. That's what you want to do. So it's not about doing the same thing for cheaper. That's yeah, the last don't, thing. Don't drop your price. You'll hurt your customers. You won't make any money. You have to change your business so that if you drop your price, you can make massive profits. Exactly. That's the key. There's a gentleman has asked, uh, a, or is, is actually quoting, amen to mentoring. Can you expand a little bit on your mentoring program, gentlemen? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, to, for, for us, mentoring is uh, follow me. That's what mentoring is. It's not do this, do that, do as I say, not as I do, or popping in a video or anything like that. Uh, it, it's all about uh, us being in the field with our people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, someone comes on board with our company, whether they're green or they're experienced, they get to go out in the field with Andrew or with our top our top team members. You're going to be able to shadow with people that are actually doing incredible volumes. Like our top agent, she's done well over you know, uh, $200,000 gross, you'll be able to go on listing appointment with her and see what she's doing. Mm -hmm. That's so, what mentorship is. Absolutely. And, and just, just to give a little more detail about the, the specific structure of what we do. So we've structured our company to be around a law firm structure. And what that means is that we have different levels of agents. So we have an associates, which are brand new, newer people that come into the yeah. company, mm -hmm. senior associates, which are experienced agents. We have partners, which are broker levels who are also very experienced in professional agents. So the way mentorship works is you basically, depending on where you start in the company depending on what your current production levels are you would then pair up with people a level above you and and then kind of see what they're doing how their business is growing the, the key to mentorship is to teach people in stages when I have a brand new person join me I'm not showing them advanced techniques because quite frankly step one is don't be afraid to generate business don't be afraid to talk to the, the Tim Hortons lady and let give them your business card that's step one talk to people then step two is Focus on what is the highest opportunity. The highest opportunity is, of course, listings. Focus on that. Then, how do I convert more listings and dyers into more listings? So it's all about stages. So mentorship really is, uh, I guess, an educational process. And and I'm, I'm gonna leave it's it with an assembly line. It's an assembly line. Actually, yeah. absolutely, the education process is an assembly line. Um, and and just just to leave a final point on it. 
again, think of like a blacksmith. Think, think of you know a journeyman, an apprentice. You know, for, first, they just hold the tongs. Then they learn how to bang a little bit. Then they learn how to dip it in properly. Then they learn metallurgy. So that's that's the process of mentorship. It's it's incremental stages, improving all along. And as you grow, you then take people you know who are starting beneath you, and not not, not beneath you lower, but beneath you as in less education, and bring them up. So the best way to learn is then to teach the person who's after you what you've learned. And so that's what mentorship is. Yeah, we actually have a philosophy in our business. You're not promotable unless you're replaceable. You learn your trade and then you teach somebody else. And in that teaching process, you learn your trade so well you're ready for the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second part of that uh, gentleman's question was that he's from Woodstock and he's asking if he would be able to continue to work in Woodstock and be a member of that board if he joined the PC275 brokerage. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Woodstock and London have uh, an agreement together so that when you're posting in Woodstock, you're posting in London. And uh, if you do any listings out there, we can, we'll can we make sure that they're not just on the London board, but they're on the Woodstock board at the same time. Woodstock's only a half an hour away. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of team meetings a week. You just come in for that. And we do webinars. Like you see right now, we're doing mm -hmm. a webinar. We do a lot of teaching and training over the webinars. Uh, and you can also follow us out in the field. And if you have listing appointments that you need help on, we're there. Yeah. And, 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 you know, also part of our plan in 2015 is, is to expand. So we have a new location we're launching in uh, Warncliffe in London, our big new location we're opening up. Uh, but our plan also is to uh, look at a few satellite offices, and one of them would be in the Woodstock area. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And would uh, that person be able to work out of their own home, or would they be required to come into the office daily? Uh, actually, do you want the the office that we're building right now is there to serve our agents as they need it. Uh, it's not a requirement to be there. Uh, we do require that depending on the level of where you are in the business as far as your education mm -hmm. and the promotion level in our company, we do require some physical meetings. Uh, so if you're from Woodstock, you'd have to come to London a couple of times. But quite frankly, you're going to get leads and you're going to do listings in London as well. So it's it, it's you're going to have a nice spread. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you can work from home as much as you want and mm -hmm. use the facilities at our office as much as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this this is your business. You're independent. And mm -hmm. we want to support you 100% to make sure that you're successful regardless. That's the key point. Uh, t team is not about this is not a job, so this is not like you know. Here is your orders; you must follow. That that's punch that's punch yeah. That, that's not what this is at all. The, the team, team structure is really about leveraging everyone's talents and abilities to streamline the process, and it's about increasing the the training process so that people are professional faster and sooner. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you are running your business. You are your the relationships you're building with your clients are yours. It's not about replacing that or taking that away from you. It's no. about augmenting and adding to that. So the, the, the short answer is, is that can you work from home and, and, and really never come to the office? Sure you can, but you're going to find that your opportunity is going to be less than somebody who is more engaged with the team and be able to absorb and learn. So that's really up to you to decide what you want to do, what the correct balance is for you. We're never going to tell you that you must come in or else you're done. That's not, that's not how we work. That's okay? exactly right. Another question from London Gentleman. Uh, what would be your number one tip to start building a new business plan? Start a new business plan. Jeez, that's uh, the number one tip is uh, what are your dreams? What yeah. do you want to achieve? If you don't know where you want to head or where you want to end up, you'll never be able to figure out where you need to start. And, and, and that is the biggest thing. Is it's really about your goals. Mm -hmm. it, you really need to figure out, okay, so do I want a big business? Do I want to, do I want, want to run a team? Do I want to, do I want to make $250,000 a year? Or am I happy with $60,000 a year? And once you have determined where you want to end up, it's very easy to actually backtrack and work out exactly what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to mm -hmm. get to there. Uh, the second thing is latch on to mentors. You are who your friends are. Mm. If you surround yourself with people that are struggling, you will struggle. If you latch on to somebody that's making $200,000 a year, you will learn how to do it. You may or may not have the talent to do it, but at least you're going to go, well, let's put it this way. If you shoot for the stars, you're going to hit the moon. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So at the end, like you, you need to latch on to those people and seek that mentorship. So you would say that the, the first and foremost thing is figuring out where you want to go. That's, yeah. that's, that, that's the, the vision, the goal. The vision. Yeah, I think that's, I would say that's, that, that's paramount. Do you agree? I would say the vision and then I would say, what are your resources? I would, I would take a true account of yourself and what you have at your disposal. Sorry, disposal. That's your capital you have available to invest in your business. That's the education and talents you have. That's your ability. Mm -hmm. and, and then I would do is I would take those and I would see how can I take this to get to my dream? And then that really is the plan. The plan is to go from here to here. And that's, that's what I would say. Yeah, is, and if you don't have the resources necessary to get you there, 
find them. Exactly. So that's there. that's why you take count they of resources. Are out there. Exactly. Those yep. resources are there. Those people are there. The mentors are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. There's a couple of questions that are similar to 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 one another, but basically they're asking how many partners are there that you have right now, and is your business going to be scalable to allow for the growth in the future to oh, be able for, yes. for these agents to be able to shadow you and. Oh yes. The, the entire model is built around, see, this is the key component. This is not the Andrew and Dustin show because if that's what this was, this would never get any bigger than a few people that we could train personally. That's just not the business model. The yeah. business model is scalable. It's being designed to be scalable to go across the country and beyond, to be honest. Um, how many partners we have? We have three partners right now, me, right. Dustin, and Gary. Are the three that's partners right. we have right now in our business. We have a few other partners that are, are in training. We've got three more partners that are in training that mm -hmm. are on their way, probably four within the next two months. Mm -hmm. This whole business has been designed so that we can have hundreds and hundreds of partners all owning peace, all growing the company, growing their business, their opportunity, their company with us. This is a partnership. This is a team environment. Mm -hmm. This is, again, like I said before in the uh, earlier in the slides, this isn't about the Andrew and Dustin show, mm -hmm. about us be being super successful and everybody else are cogs in the machine. I know that some of you might feel that way where you are right now, but the, we are the exact opposite. You, you need to have a paradigm shift and realize that we have built something that is not about us. Mm -hmm. the, the, the key with this is that this is not about our ego. It can't, it can't be, to be honest. It would never get any further than... Uh, our personal capabilities. Yes, yeah, that, that'd be yeah. it. It has to, it has to be, outgrow us. And that, and that was the fundamental, that was one of the first things we decided when we built this model, is that this has to be something that does not need us, that can grow beyond us, and that can other people can take and do better than us. And, 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 and what I cannot wait for is for our partners to join our company who build bigger, faster, stronger teams and eclipse us. That, that'll, that'll actually be a pretty amazing. That's really exciting, yeah. actually. So the short answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Short answer is yes. Short answer is uh, we, it's we, very we, scalable, we, lots yes. of opportunity for all partners. We have done uh, su substantial uh, business reviews, a SWOT analysis, and, and looking at our opportunities. And, and just the London market alone can, can hold a, a much larger our team than we have currently right now. Oh, and gosh. It'll take us a decade to get to the point where we even come remotely close to saturation. And by that time, those people will have opportunities in other areas mm. and expansion. It, it, the, the opportunity is endless. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and again, you know, if you want more details on that, more, more than welcome to shoot us an email or, Absolutely. or you know, we can yeah. continue the conversation yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Now, we've got so many more questions. We're never going to get to all of them tonight, gentlemen. Uh, I, here's a statement here that said, the boards need to embrace change. Too expensive structure mm -hmm. and restrictive to teams. Forcing any licensed realtor to be a member of the board. How do we bring change to the board to allow an affordable structure? The, the, the way you create that kind of influence is by, again, it's team. It's, it's all about how big your organization is and how much influence you have on the organizations and governing bodies mm. that you work with. Uh, one individual cannot make the change at the board, but no. if you have a hundred of us all together, we have the same goal. Absolutely. So we do want to see those changes happening. So align yourself with other like-minded individuals, and together we are strong. And and I, and I do make a point about that. You know, the, the board is really important to us. We, it is. we we see the board as our ally in in building a strong industry together. And so so we're we're, we're on a first name basis with all with all the uh, the people at the board. And uh, <laughs> we're we're the problem child. Yeah, we're the problem child. I'm, I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the point is, is that we have a strong relationship with the board. And any in any industry, sorry, any city that we go into, we'll also focus on building a relationship with the board because the board is not the enemy, not the slightest. No. No. The board is really, I think, the way that as an association of realtors that we can further grow our our business model, not just our model, but uh, the industry as a total. Well, when you look at it, at the end of the day, the, the board is our association. Yes. So as the body of the association changes, so does the board. Mm -hmm. So you want to see change happening at the board? Become the change you want to see. Exactly. Embrace change and become the change. That, and that, that's one of our core values is be the change you want to see in the world. So That's that, exactly right. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm just wondering here, uh, a question that asks, what are your thoughts on how a PC-275 agent can succeed in a small town? And we'll have to be quick, fellas, because we're going to have to draw it to a close, and there are two other questions I'd like to get in, but okay. that okay. one there, how, how would uh, someone in a small sure. town, how do you think they would fare being a PC-275 agent, small and terrible Great. Town? I think it would be great. I, 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 you need to hit it with a hammer yeah. really fast. Yeah. Uh, speed is of the essence. Mm. So uh, going in there meekly, 
you know, is not going to be successful. Uh, if you, in a small town, small towns are insular. In order for you to succeed in a small town, you have to make a massive ripple in your pond as fast as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. It needs to be well planned, and it needs to be coordinated with the people that you're teamed up with. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hit, say, a small place like Ingersoll, you want to hit that really, really hard. You need to align yourself with people that are able to put the money in, the time and the energy, and have a plan, and make it so the consumer is so aware of you that all your competition can't wedge themselves in between you and the consumer. Yeah. And actually, we've done it in London. When we first started, no one knew us. No one knew anything about us. And quite frankly, they were stealing our signs. They were running over them with cars. Uh, it, it's... Uh, yeah. It, it was uh, lots of fun, but we were able to get ourselves in there mm -hmm. uh, and 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 really defend ourselves in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And and you know what, we've got the experience. We know yeah, how and, to do it. And I mean, now now we're actually quite strong in St. Thomas as well too. So we we've also mm -hmm. put the, the exact same practice in place out oh, there. St. Thomas was insular. Very. Yeah, and we we got ourselves. Uh, uh, we we do a lot of sales. In St. Yeah, Thomas, yeah, we have a lot of inventory yeah. out there. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, the short and long is. Small towns absolutely can do it. Yeah. We love small towns. We yeah. want to get into more oh, yeah. small towns. Oh yeah. You know, it's it. It's, this is not. This is not. This is not just urban big cities only. This, no. this is this is more of a Walmart strategy where we'd love to really kind of bracket the communities that we want to get into. So it's not just about you know, the big urban core. It's not Toronto GTA. It's all the surrounding stuff around that, and then the Toronto kind of just go into it. It's really how that's they right. So if any of you are from a small town and you're wanting to have that edge, you want to be able to penetrate your market. We want that too. Absolutely. And we're looking to partner with people who want to do that as well too. So exactly. you won't be doing it alone. That's right. Okay. Good time for maybe two uh, other questions. What sure. does your organal chart look like and who is coaching you in your business? Our coaches are everyone. Yeah. So as Andrew was saying, we've, we've hired coaches, we've gone to seminars, we research online. A lot of this is self-taught. A lot of this is... Uh, a lot of this is bloody noses. This is a lot of falling on our faces and learning from our own mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Again, we're, we're students. We're humble. Our cup mm -hmm. is empty. Uh, we, we may talk like we know what we're doing. We've just been beat up more than you. So that that's all it is. And uh, as far as coaches, life is our coach. Everybody's our coach. Yeah, uh, and I mean, we we've hired a bunch of the big names, and I, I don't want to sit your name drop, but you know, yeah. we we've we've definitely gone through the traditional paths of hiring the top names in real estate, and have them go through their expensive courses, and they walk you through how to build your business. We've done that, and we, mm -hmm. we've taken what we can from those business models and those structures, and we've adapted them to what we want to do. Um, but you know, my, my visionary, the, one of the people that I, I actually love reading and, and really love uh, kind of identifying with is Richard Branson. He's oh, someone that yeah. is, is someone that I think is is a, is a mm -hmm. true visionary and, and a business builder that I would love to aspire to. So if I could say he, he he's he's probably my top uh, right now on my, on my list. That's right. Sorry, there was two parts of that question. Yes. Uh, it was who is your uh, an organizational chart? The organizational chart. Love to talk to you about that. It's a little bit more complicated than what we can do on a webinar, and yeah. it takes a little bit more time. If any of you are interested in learning about our organizational chart, how we structure, where you would start with our business if you decided to join with us, uh, we'd be happy to sit down and talk with yeah, you. Just shoot us an email, give us a call. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so someone wants to let you know that Ingersoll is not that small. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I know. I, know. We're, I mean, That's I know. I know. Itty bitty <laughs> tiny Ingersoll. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've actually done and a lot of deals out in Ingersoll. Our very so. last question yeah. here. Uh, I think it could sum everything up. Fellas, what is your dream? <sighs> That's a tough one, actually. Honestly, I have, I have a lot of dreams. Um, for me, what is my dream? My dream is I want to achieve the abundance in my life that will give me the financial freedom to be able to really give to this world, to, to actually have a true impact on the monumental shifts that are happening in our civilization right now. I, 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 know, I know I'm talking big here, but I would love oh, the ability. This is important. Yeah, I would love the ability to actually help build a better world. And what do I mean by a better world? I mean a place where people actually give a crap about each other, a place where people are rewarded for their efforts, and a place where people who, um, I don't know, like rob and, and steal, like I'm not, not going to name some financial people that I know, but um, you know, those people are, are not allowed to do what they're doing. So how do I accomplish all that? Well, I don't know. But what I do know is that uh, the first step is to having power in the old system before you can have power in the new system. And the old system right now is money. So my dream right now is to make money so that I have that ability to do that, have an impact. And just to let you know, this is not a Miss Canada pageant, by the way. It's uh, no. You know. Hey, hey, you asked me. 
<laughs> you, 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 you ask a big question, you get a big answer. Uh, for me, my vision, my goal, uh, business-wise, is to see a PC-275 location, a franchise owned by multitude of owners, partners, people that we are able to walk down the road of life with and see super successful. My, my goal is to achieve personal wealth and success and influence, mm -hmm. but to bring as many people with me as humanly possible. Yeah. Actually, to see people supersede me, to go past what I'm able to do. And it, it, nothing would be, make me more proud than somebody who is able to eclipse uh, our, our abilities. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, All right, uh, gentlemen. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Uh, uh, to I was going to say a uh, place on the beach as well, too. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this evening. It's been a real pleasure talking to you all and some excitement going. And this is just the first in a series of webinars, and we're going to see a lot more of Dustin and Andrew in the future. So have a great evening, and thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Good guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye.